Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the top 5 fake items that have come into the Porn Star shop. Let's get to it. Up first is the infamous Well Fargo box from season 5, where Rick gets himself all in a mess and ends up buying a complete dud. In walks a gentleman and he opens what he says is a Wells Fargo Stronghold box. For those that don't know, these are reinforced boxes that were made to basically transport goods in with a special set of keys. It was meant to be a safer way of transporting your goods in the days of horse and carriages. The gentleman opens the box and inside is a ball and chain, which is instantly dismissed by Rick as being fake due to the way it was manufactured and the stamping that is on all the fakes. But as for the box, he believed it could be the genuine item. He paid $450 for what he believed was the genuine article. Even in rough shape, this could be done up and turned for a tidy profit. However, all thoughts of profit were soon stripped away from Rick when his expert, the Beard of Knowledge, promptly told him that this was a complete fake and that he should have really spotted this. Up next we come to a girl's best friend, the diamond. This once again was Rick, but you can't blame him for this one. A man in a suit brought a pair of diamond earrings to be pawned. Rick asked for documentation, and the man in the suit kindly obliged. Rick asked all the right questions, and the gentleman provided all the correct answers, to which even Rick was happy with. And this was even before a receipt was provided for Rick to mull over. After all the verification, Rick put his hand in the till and pulled out $40,000. He handed it over to the gentleman and wished him well. A few days later, the police showed up and told Rick that the jewellery was stolen. The victim got her jewellery straight back and the gentleman in the suit got the justice he deserved. But Rick was still down $40,000, to which he admitted that was the biggest bust I have ever had in the pawn shop. Up next is a dud from Corey, obviously trying to impress his father with his sporting knowledge. He took a gamble on a Willie Mays uniform. The uniform was brought into the shop and was told to be a game-worn Willie Mays uniform from when he played for the San Fran Giants in 1961. After buying the uniform for $31,000, even Chum Lee noted that the style of Willie's play should mean that the uniform would be dirty as he was well known for running the bases, but there was not a smudge of dirt on it anywhere. It was pristine. After trying to sell it for an over-the-top price of $80,000, it was eventually taken to auction where it was sold for just $19,000, which was a loss of $12,000. However, the story does not end there. After it was bought to auction, it turns out that the uniform never actually belonged to Willie Mays and was just a sample piece with virtually no value. Another Corey moment is when he was working the night shift in his early years. Admitting that he didn't have much experience, it is always best to learn the hard way sometimes. He goes on to explain how he bought a Rolex one evening, and by the end of the week, he bought another six. Obviously, this arose suspicion with Rick, who then checked them out and deemed them all fake. It was guessed that word got around that there was a newbie on the desk at nights. This only cost the shop $4,000, but was still invaluable in teaching Corey some hard life lessons in the pawning industry. And lastly, we have the iconic Shoeless Joe Jackson book with his signature. The first to note about this signature is that no one can ever be 100% about a Joe Jackson signature as there are not many to verify a signature against. And why is this? Well, he was completely illiterate. He couldn't even write his own name. He had to learn to basically draw his name as best he could, which meant there were a few telltale clues with his signature. Unfortunately for Rick, he took the gamble without contacting one of his renowned contacts, costing him an impressive $13,000. He eventually took it to his book appraiser, who confirmed she thought it was in fact a fake. Not being happy about this, he even sent it off for a second approval, hoping for a better answer, only to find out that not only was it definitely fake, 
it was as much of a copy of a copy of a copy of his signature as they had ever seen. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you did enjoy this video, hit that like and subscribe button. Until next time.